everyone, welcome to the third series of Heart at Home with myself, Rachel Hare. Greetings to you all if you've been tuning in before, it's fantastic that you've returned. And if you're a newbie to Harp at Home, well, you're very welcome. So just to let you know what we do at Harp at Home, um, my name is Rachel Hare, as I said, and I'm using these series really just to kind of teach you my favourite tunes, uh, mainly from the Scottish tradition. Um, and the odd tune that I've written myself. So this series, um, we're going to do things a little bit differently. I have some traditional Scottish tunes to teach you, but I'm also in the middle of writing you a heart at home suite. So this will be taught over, I think, three workshops, maybe four. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, and it will be a suite of tunes that you can kind of play one after another or you can play them independently for um, as well. So, but the first couple of workshops, we have some Scottish tunes to learn. Now, as ever, if you don't already, please do take the time to subscribe to the Harp at Home YouTube channel. You can do that by, I think, pressing in the left hand side, there should be a little subscribe button that you can press. Um, also, do consider signing up to the Harp at Home mailing list. This is at harpathome.com and really, what this means is that every week, once the workshop is live, I'll send you a wee email just to remind you that it's live and that the music is available to purchase on my website. And of course, please do consider purchasing that music on my website. Um, every week I will be putting up a PDF the day before the workshop on the Sunday. And this PDF will have the music for the arrangement that we learn, plus a full kind of um, list of links relating to the tune that we've learned. Um, possibly some performances of it and any other links that I chat about and things that I chat about in the blather section, which uh, comes at the end of the workshop. So the first workshop of series three. Now today, when this premieres, it's the 18th of January. Next week is Monday, the 25th of January. And the 25th of January is a very important date in Scottish culture. It is Burns Night. This is the night when Scots around the world celebrate the life and works of Scotland's national bard, the national poet and song writer, Robert Burns. Now, Robert Burns lived from 1759 to 1796, and he wrote countless, so, so many songs and poets, both in the English language and in the Scots dialect, and the Scots language, I should say, sorry. Um, and yeah, he's quite something. There, you'll recognise many of the titles of his tunes. I think his most famous song was Auld Lang Syne and he wrote things like Tam o' Shanter, eh, My Love Is Like a Red, Red Rose. Many, many songs and poems which are still very much alive and part of Scottish culture. And a lot of his songs are still sung today by some of Scotland's most fantastic folk singers. Now we're going to be learning a Robert Burns song today but we're just going to take five minutes just now and I'm going to introduce you to one of those Scottish singers, one of those Scottish folk singers who um, counts Burns as one of her biggest influences. She still sings a lot of Burns's material. I'm going to have a wee chat now with Claire Hastings. Now Claire is from Dumfries. Dumfries is in the southwest of Scotland and it's the place where Robert Burns spent the latter part of his life. So yeah, we're going to have a wee chat with her and hopefully she might sing us a song at the end. Okay, so my uh, first guest of the third series is the wonderful Claire Hastings, who is a folk singer, a, Sc a Scottish folk singer. Thank you so much for joining us, Claire. You're welcome. Thanks for having me along. No bother. So can you maybe tell us a little bit about um, how you started to sing? Yeah, so um, I suppose it was primary school, really. I didn't have a musical family, didn't come from a musical background. Um, and I was at quite a small village primary school and um, they were really encouraging with my singing. They entered us into local music competitions, the Burns competition. Um, and That's fantastic. So are you, am I right in thinking you're from the Dumfries? Is it near Dumfries? Yeah, that you're from. I am, yeah. Yeah, rural Dumfrieshire, <laughs> Scotland. And that's very much Burns country. And today we're actually going to be learning a tune belonging to a Burns song, um, the tune for What Can A Young Lassie. So quite a kind of, 
rousing kind of burn song i guess uh, did you do a lot of singing then of burns material in school was that part of your kind of early kind of singing life I did, yeah. Like like you said, Dumfries is proper, Burns country. And we got we learned a lot about Robert Burns in school. He lived there for quite quite a long time. Um and he when he was living um on a farm in Dumfries at Ellisland Farm, that was just like two miles from the farm that I grew up on. Oh wow, so proper so local. I wonder if I had been around a couple of hundred years earlier, would I maybe have bumped into him along the river? You could have been one of his ladies. That's a little bit scary. I could have been. <laughs> I could have been. I could have been. But um, yeah, we did. We like the the Burns competition. We had to do um, Burns poetry and Burns songs. So that was my first introduction to Robert Burns, really. And is it still? Do you still sing a lot of Burns material now in your kind of career as a singer in Scotland and and abroad? I do, yeah, I do. Um, I love the works of Robert Burns and the versatility, and um, I've taken a couple of his songs and written my own tunes to them as well. There's a song called "The Posy," um, that I wrote my own melody to that one, and it's beautiful, beautiful lyrics. Fantastic! And have you got? Is that on one one of your albums then? Uh, yes, it's on my first album, "Between River and Railway." Fantastic. We will make sure that we post a link um, in the comments and on the PDF as well so that you can investigate more about Claire's music. And now you, you're a fellow musician who's been living in Glasgow and kind of been dealing with lockdown life. What have you been up to over the past? Well, it's, it's nearly a year. I think you kind of started off the year in New Zealand just after myself, I think, and Ron were in New Zealand. Am I right? You got stuck there for a while. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Is that right? I, I forgot you were there just before. Yeah. Well. Um, so yeah, just when it was all happening, it was all kicking off. Um, I was supposed to have a tour in Australia and then visit my sister and my family in New Zealand and Christchurch, but uh, the tour got cancelled. So we went straight to New Zealand and got locked down there for five or six weeks. We were meant to be there 10 days. We were there six weeks. Wow. There's um, worse places to be locked yeah. down, I have to say. It's true. Yeah, that is true. That is true. But the walls were starting to close in after a while with my sister, my brother-in-law, a one-year-old, a three-year-old and two dogs and my husband <laughs> all in this little house. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's how I that's how I first started my lockdown experience. Um, and then get it, coming back to Scotland, just like yourself, really a lot of online teaching, um, some live stream concerts. And I started doing some live streams for, for wee ones as well, for under fives. So every Sunday morning or most Sunday mornings, I do um, just a kind of fun music session on my Claire's Music Club Facebook page. And that's been quite a help to parents as well to just, mm. you know, have, have something that's a little bit educational and a bit fun for their children to join in with and do a bit of folk music as well. That's really good. It's just really good to be able to introduce these youngsters to folk music so so young, not just the, you know, the kind of stuff that's on the TV and on streaming services. So yeah, we'll make sure we post a link um, in the comments as well to that. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I think you're going to sing us a song. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about the song you're going to sing for us? Yeah, so the burn song I'm going to sing is one of my favourites. And it's all about Burns' love of the lassies, which he was famous <laughs> for. And it's Green Grow the Rashes O. And my favourite verse in this is the final verse. So the final verse is, um, Old nature swears the lovely dears, her noblest work she classes O. Her prentice hand she tried on man, and then she made the lassies O. So basically, Mother Nature had a go when she was making humans. She, she had a go with the man first as a wee practice run and then she got it right the second time with the lassies <laughs> i like that that's a that's a good one definitely definitely thank you so much claire for having a chat and as i say i'll post all the links so that you can find more about claire in the comments and on your pdf so yeah thank you claire thanks rachel this is green grow the rashes <laughs> There's not but care on every hand, and every eye that passes o'er, but 
signifies the life of man and where not for the lads is all. Green grow the ashes all, green grow the ashes all. The sweetest hours that e'er I spend are spent among the lads is all. The world ladies may riches chase and riches still may fly the most. Huge thank you to Claire for taking the time to chat to us here at Harp at Home and to to sing that song Green Grow the Rashes O. You might recognise that one. Um, it's played by quite a lot of harp players actually that. So really lovely that she took the time to sing that to her. Now please do take a minute to like and visit her Facebook pages. She has two. She has her Claire's Music Club, which is the club that she was talking about, the, um, the kind of Facebook Live events that she runs for kids. If you know any youngsters that might fancy joining in some Scottish folk songs with her, please do pass the link on to them. Um, and also do consider liking her official Facebook page. Now, on the 25th of January, on Burns Night this year, 2021, um, she is going to be running a Facebook Live Burns Night. It's going to be at 8pm. Now, I know that's an hour after Harp at Home. Um, maybe next Monday you could maybe do Harp at Home after the Burns Night or maybe on the Tuesday because I really do recommend that you tune in to Claire's uh, Burns Night on Facebook Live. It'll be fantastic. So, huge thanks again to her for joining us today. So... The tune that we're going to be learning, the Robert Burns tune, we're going to be learning the melody for the Robert Burns song, What Can a Young Lassie? So this is one of Burns' song that he wrote in the Scottish language, in the Scots language. And I'm going to read you some of the words, I'm going to attempt to, <laughs> to read in Scots. What can a young lassie, what can a young lassie, what can a young lassie do we an old man? Bad luck in the penny that tempted my minnie to sell her per Jenny for siller and land. He's always complaining that from morning till evening he hosts and he harpers the weary day lang. He's dots and he's dots and his blood is, blood is frozen. Oh, dreary the night we a crazy old man. So this song, it's very much, it has your, your chorus and your verse. And when you learn the tune to it, the chorus is very kind of 
nice and easy going. Then it kind of gets almost um, a little bit kind of like angry. It's got the Scotch snaps in it, as you'll hear. And this is the verses. And this song is kind of written about a, a young lassie who's been made to marry an old man. And it's talking about, oh my goodness, what is she doing with him? Like, why? Why is she married him? And the verses kind of go on to kind of like talk about the bad points about this poor old man, about how he kind of, he's always complaining, complaining all day long and um, she can never please him. And it's just like, and he's always jealous of the other younger men who the younger woman, his younger wife might uh, fancy himself. So, uh, so it's some great words actually. I've, I, as part of your PDF, you'll see the words. So do take the time to kind of have a look at it. Hope you enjoy listen, uh, learning this tune. Um, as ever, come back at the end and join me for the blather section. So yeah, I'll play it through to you first and then we'll head off and uh, learn it in front of the green screen. So this is our first tune of series three, what Can a Young Lassie by Robert Burns? So there you go, just the ones through um, What Can A Young Lassie. So yeah, our first tune of series three, our first workshop and yeah, a lovely Robert Burns one. A little bit of a moody one there. I think this is the first time, well, not the first time, but you know, I kind of tend to gravitate towards a more major sounding, happier tunes. This is a little bit more moody to start off in series three. So yeah, let's head over to the green screen now and we'll learn it together. Hello, welcome back to the famous Rachel here green screen. It's been a while, so glad you could join me. And we're going to learn um, the tune which belongs to the Burns song, the Robert Burns song, What Can A Young Lassie? So first off, as usual, we need to uh, set our harp in the right key. This tune is an A natural minor and A natural minor shares the same key signature as C major. So that means you need to put your harp into C major levers. Okay, for my harp, I tuned an E flat major. So I therefore have my E's, my A's and my B levers on. If you have a harp that is already tuned in C major, you don't need to do anything, okay? Because as I said, C major, same key signature, same levers as in A minor. So I'm gonna start off by playing you the melody to the first part of the tune. We're dividing this into two parts, even though it's a song, I guess. I think the, the first part is your chorus really, and your second part is um it's it's the the verse so the first part has kind of got a nice kind of lazy kind of rocking feel to it so it's in six eight this tune i guess for just now we could describe it as being a gentle jig i say for just now because it kind of changes the feel a little bit in the second part have a listen to the first part which i'm going to play twice because you must play it twice in order for it to fit the words have a listen Off with fourth finger 
finger on the E above middle C, second on the A and thumb on the B. Now this fourth finger, this first note, the E, is going to be an anacrusis, so a pick up note. So it's going to play first and then we're going to start our next bit. So we're going to play our E, then we're going to go A, B, A. Okay, I'm going to count to two and we'll try playing that together. See how we got on for the first four notes. One, two. Place your fingers fourth on the E, second on the A and thumb on B. We're gonna play up them and then our A again after two. One, two. Lovely. Okay, so we're gonna be hopping about quite a lot in this tune. This tune has a lot of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And a lot of the fingering we're kind of doing follows that rhythm. It's kind of created. I've used the fingering a lot. To kind of so that you can feel the stresses on the tune. Let's do that one more time for the crack. One, two. Nice. Our next part, we're going to jump up three, two, one to C, D, and E. So that's C above middle C, second and D, thumb on E. We're going to play up those. Same kind of that. Da, da, da. We're going to have that long shirt. Da, 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 da. That's going to be a lot of the rhythm we're going to use. I'm going to count to three for this. Two, three. Nice. We'll do that again after three. Two, three. Lovely. So when you put that together, that's our first phrase. Okay, have a listen. Up from C. Okay, let's try it together. We'll do it a little bit slower for just now, actually. I'm kind of speeding ahead of you guys already. One, two. Let's reset and go again. Remember, you can pause, rewind, slow down. Google how to slow down YouTube videos if it might be a help. Um, but remember, although this is premiering live, it's instantly going to be available so you can live rewind and everything from now on, really. Um, yeah, let's go for that first phrase. After two. One, two. We're going to move on to our second phrase. I'm going to play it to you. It's going to be split into two sections. So we'll teach us these two little parts. We're going to stay up where we've just been. We've come, just come up from C to E. We place your second finger onto D and your thumb onto E. We're going to play our D and then move it to the C. E, C. You see what happens? I played my D. I'm going to play my thumb as I'm playing my thumb. I move my second to the C. Let's try those three notes up together. One, two. Lovely. I'm going to add on after that B, A, G. So visually, I'm moving to those three white notes. I'm always looking for kind of like wee patterns when I'm playing. That's how I remember that bit because I'm going to three white notes. Let's add those on. So that means you'll be crossing over with your thumb onto B and coming down after two. So you can get all those six notes our second phrase. One, two. Lovely. Go for it again. You ready? One, two. So a D, C, E. D, E, C, sorry. So, sorry guys, you can tell this is the first workshop. I'm getting my, getting my numbers and names, letters, notes mixed up. I can't even remember what they're called. Dear me. Let's try it again and we will definitely do D, E, C. You ready? One, two. Crossover down from B. Great. Do you think we could put that with our first phrase? If you remember, our first phrase was E, A, D, A, then up from C. Okay. Let's pop those fingers on. You might want to use third finger on that bottom finger. I, I like using my fourth. After two, when we start our first and second phrase. One, two. Good, stay up there. And down from B. Nice, replace, we'll go again. We'll do it a touch slower actually, I think. I'm really speeding ahead today. One, two. bit 
our third phrase. Good old Burns, he's followed that lovely good Scottish tune structure. Our third phrase is the same as the first. Okay, it's almost exactly the same. We're not going to have the anacrusis. We're not going to have the upbeat. We're going to leave off the E. So that means instead you're just going to have second and A, thumb on B. You're going to play A, B, A and up three from C. Okay, so you're not adding in the E this time. Let's try that new version, I guess, of the first phrase, the third phrase. A, B, A, up three from C. You ready? One, two. Nice. Go for it again. Reset. So A, B, A, up from C. One, two. Good. Let's try putting all those three together. Oh, I know I like to repeat stuff, but it's good. It helps it sink into your memory, especially if you're doing this by ear or by sight by watching my hands without the music. After two. You ready? E at the start, though. One, two. Crossover down from B. First phrase again, A, B, A. Up from C. Nice, one more time. Let's do it slower. I really speed these ahead. I'm sorry about this. One, two. A, B, A. Up from C. Now our next notes, have a listen. a G and we're going to have three E's. Now if you were to look at that in isolation in the music you might be tempted to use your thumb on the G which if you were just to play that by itself it would make sense but we need to consider what's happened before. The three notes before where we were going up from the C our thumb finished on that E. That's a heck of a big jump there. Instead I want you to open up your hand place your second in the G third on E G, and then three E's, changing fingers. So we have second and G, I like to use my third, and I like to go three, two, three. So we have G, third finger and E, second and third. Let's just try those da, 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 in isolation like that, but your thumb's gonna be kind of wiggling free just now. It's just played that top note, remember. Let's try those four notes. One, Two. Good. Go for it again. One, two. Okay. Let's try putting the third phrase together with that. So we're going to go A, B, A, up from the C. Open your hand up so you can jump your second on. Okay. Let's have a go. One, two. Excellent. One more time. A, B, A. One, two. Hand open, G and three E's. Brilliant. Good. Okay, let's see if we can go for that first line. So that's our first, our first half and it repeats. Okay, so you've, you've done your first part already. It's, it's good work, guys. Not bad for the First workshop of, of 2021, I was about to say of January. It's the first workshop of January, but it's the first workshop of the year back at home. So, four, two, one on E, A, and B. Let's see how we got on. Nice and slow. One, two. So, E first, A, B, A, up from C. D, A, C crossover, down. A, B, A, up from C. twice through so that will mean actually at the end you need to change and put your fourth finger onto E so you, you do end up with four E's in the end I guess there <laughs> kind of making excuses for myself let's let's see if we can do all of that twice through after two one two up from C down from B open G and three E's E E E we 
place, fourth on to E. Let's go again. So fourth E, second A, thumb B. After two. One, two. In the first part could be kind of thought of as being kind of gentle jig but this kind of starts introducing snaps like what we would recognize as a rhythm from this just be so that um, rhythm, the scotch snap which is um, a semi quaver with a dotted quaver or uh oh my goodness this is testing me in the first workshop of the series guys for how you guys call it in the u.s ah uh, a no, a 16th note and a dotted 8th note. There we go, a 16th note and a dotted 8th note. Those Scotch snaps, okay? So I guess, in my head, because this tune is still in 6-8, it's not turned into this just B. I like to think of it as turned into, I guess, a 6-8 pipe march. That's what I'm going to call the second part of this tune, a 6-8 pipe march. Gotta love my pipe tunes. <laughs> um, but um, we're, we're not in the West Highlands. We have to remember we are in the southwest of Scotland with Burns. So... This part, have a listen to it again, because I've kind of been chatting away there. <laughs> you hear the snaps? There's still a rough lot of repetition though. It essentially goes twice this part, but with a different ending. Here's your different ending. And then we're kind of back to the gentle jig idea. Okay, so this part we're going to start with our thumb on the higher of the C's that we've been using and I want you to see if you can stretch out with your second to try and place on with the E your second on the E your third is going to, going to be going on to this C okay it's hard to place it on just now don't bother placing it on actually because that will kind of will hurt your hand a little bit and it's just better for your rhythm and your strength if you can kind of swap so if you want to place on the E just practice just now actually that mo movement if you can playing the C and as you're playing your C with your thumb, placing your third onto the bottom C, onto that middle C. Okay, so we're going to play the C, and then this is where our first snap is going to come. We're going to have a snap on every strong beat of this, on the one, two, on the, of the one, two, three, two, two, three. But instead of going one, two, three, two, two, three, which is what the first part was, was doing, we've got the snap right at the start, so go... One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, proper Scottish sounding now. So, we're going to play our C, and then we have the snap between the E and the C, and then we're using our second finger to play the C again. So this is going to be a pattern throughout that. We're going to have a snap and a double note, which, um, so you've got your lead note, which is the start of the snap, and then you're playing your kind of long note again. Let's see if we can get that together. So that C is an anacrusis, so the E is going to be in the first beat. One, two. Okay, so we're swapping our second finger onto that double note. So you're not using the same finger on the two Cs there. High C, E, low C, low C. After two together. One, two. Nice. Now we're gonna have our thumb on the E. We're gonna repeat the same idea, the same rhythmic idea. And I guess the same kind of, it's like a sequence. 
we're gonna have an E and two Ds. So I always like to, if I've got double notes, I tend to like to use three two. Some people use two three. Three two just makes more sense for me. I'm not totally why sure why. I think it's because I find that my third finger's stronger, maybe. I'm not sure. Thumb and E, second and D, that would feel a little bit strange having your second out or not on that string, but you are going to use it to play that second D. Can we try those? I'm going to count to two for you for this. That's not the strict count in, I know, but just so we can try E and two Ds. One, two, E, D, D. Good. Let's try again. So that's snap. One, two. Nice. One more time. One, two. Good. Now I want you to move your thumb to the G. Third and E, same idea. G and two E's. Second one is played with your second finger. One, two. So G and two E's. Let's match it up. Thumb on G, third and E. Second finger is going to get ready to play the second D. One, two. Okay, so that was three bits there. We had our thumb on the top C, E and two C's. E and two D's, G and two E's, that's the start of our second phrase there. Okay, so the first two bits were the first phrase, the third section was the second phrase. Start with that. Let's try that together after two. Remember, thumbs the anacrusis. One, two. E and two D's, G and two E's. Good. Oh, nearly slipped there myself. After two, let's go for it again. One, Two. E and two D's. G and two E's. Nice. Same rhythm here, but a different kind of sequence. Third and E, thumb and A. Your second finger is going to get ready to go onto the G. Don't place it on quite yet. Place it on as you're playing the A. So you've got snap, long. Try it together after two. I know that's not the strict count, but we'll try it after two. One, two. Okay, let's add that on. That's our first and our second phrase, folks. One, two. So E and C's, E and D's. G and E's, E A G. Good, can we try it again? One, two. same as the first so you're gonna have an e and two c's um but you've used your second finger there you're gonna try change your finger and so you follow what the normal pattern was but so the one three two so this is gonna be fingered differently before we had two three two but this time use your thumb there so we have e two c's e and two d's for a third phrase you ready one two e's and c's e and d's Let's add that on. From the start of that second part. One, two. E and D's. G and E's. E, A. Crossover. First phrase, E's and C's. Okay, do you see what was happening there? At the end of our second phrase, I crossed my thumb over the E and that's us back to the start. Whereas before we had, we've missed out that C, we're just going E, C. Try again. One, two. E's and C's, E and D's. Lovely. Ending phrase for the first time round. Have a listen. Okay, because you've ended up, pop your thumb on the G, your third is going to get ready to go onto the E. Play your G. I'm going to place on E, G, and A. So we have G and E. G, and e. G E, G, A. Let's try it together, together after two. Excuse me, can't speak English today. One, two. 
Nice. So we still got that snap in. Okay, snaps all the way in this part, I'll tell you. One, two. Nice. Excellent. Shall we try and see if we can go for the whole of that first time round it then? After two. One, two. it we're not actually it's going to be a little bit different so the repeat line first phrase the same let's try that first phrase so we have the c e c c and e's and d's one two nice have a listen to the next bit okay so this is like our ending phrase actually but i've made it a little bit flowery and i want you at that point to kind of slow down a little bit thumb on g second and e we're going to have g then up E, G, A, and in fact, oh wait, no, it doesn't go to the A, excuse me, it goes to the C, so thumb up to the C, that's our melody there, G, E, G, C, okay, but we're going to make that a little bit flowery, we're going to add in some chord notes, E, A, and C, okay, so we have placing my thumb on there so I'm play, play my G E as I'm placing my G with the second finger thumb onto the tie C good let's try it together G E G E so one three two then your chord notes one two Second time round it, are you ready? Our first phrase as usual. One, two. E's and D's. New bit that we just did. And flower it up with a lovely broken chord. Thanks, <laughs> great. Ending phrase. We're going to come tumbling down. We're back to our jig section. And with a little bit of a sexy point march at the end there. So, ending phrase. Second and high D, thumb on E. This is the highest point of this tune. Second and D, thumb on E. We're going to tumble down six notes, so divide them into three. So down three, E, D, C, cross over, down three from B to G. Let's just try that just now. One, two. Good, this time pop your fourth finger out, because I want you to put it on the E at the end. Let's do that again. Placing your fourth on the E at the end. One, two. Fourth on E now, because we're going to snap up from the E to the A. So replace now your thumb on the A, E, A. That's our little pipe march that we've got in. And an extra two A's. Play them two, three, or two, one. So three A's at the end. So you can go that fourth finger onto the E. And then you have snap up to the A and another two A's. See if we can go for that ending phrase. One, two. E, A, another two A's. Nice. One more time. One, two. pretty good going and um, will we see if we can do all the second part already i'll describe it as we're going along so thumb on high c second and e third is going to get ready to snap down to that c so it's quite hard to place it on just keep it hanging for you just now one two e and two c's e and two d's g and two e's then e a g crossover back to the first phrase e and two c's First ending, G, E, G, A. Repeat it, back to start. Okay, it changes here. G, E, G, flower it up. Nice. And then ending. Bit of a row there. E's and three A's at the end. Good. Go for it again. Remember, you can pause. 
pause, rewind if you want to look at things again. One, two. Tune. So to remind yourself, it starts off fourth and E, second and eighth and on B. We went up those A, B, A, then up three from C. And we stayed up there because you went D, E, C, kind of a little bit inside out there. Cross over down those three white mark, wait, three white notes. Excuse me. First raise same as the first. Up from the C. So first part twice, second part twice, but it changes the second time around, essentially. One, two. So this um, the left hand for this tune. Now I've given you two options as ever. I've actually got to kind of take you through two of the options um, because it might be a little bit challenging to get the full kind of more advanced thing straight off. So I'm going to teach you how to do the more kind of simplified version first as a springboard to be able to get the harder one. So have a listen to what the left hand is going to be. I'll play you, play you all first. Or I'll play you, yeah, no, I'm just going to play you the first part. Kind of out of the ways on how I do this thing. Have a listen to the first part with the left hand. that happens at three times round and then we're going to finish off with some uh, fifths. I'm going to play you the simplified version now. We're going to start off by doing this with single notes. This is going to springboard to you to get the more trickier version. If you're doing the, um, this is a kind of individual part, you could actually place it on the fingers. But if you're going to be using this as a way to get the harder one, I want you to try this. Use your fourth finger, then we're just going to use our pointing finger, our second finger, to play down G, F, and then E. So it's a four note pattern. We have our A, G, F, and then E. Okay, let's try that after, after two. One, two, A, G, F, and E. Okay, and that's going to go around three times. That is going to come on the beat. So it's going to come on the one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, three. Okay, so 
Remember our first beat is an anacrusis, so that means our A matches up with the E. One, two, three. We're coming up from the C, we have the G. Okay, let's try those first two notes, matching up A with the A, G comes when you're going up from the C. One, two. A, G with the C. Two, three. Well done. Our next strong beat is on that D. Now our left hand has moved to the F. One, two, three. When you're coming down from the B, you have your E. Okay, so that's with our second phrase. The left hand is on the F. It's going to match up with that first note, the D. One, two, three, crossover. You're going down three from B. And you have the E. Okay, did you get that? Let's try it together. Two, three. Good. Let's add the first bit on. The A, the G. Okay, A with the A, G with the C. Fourth finger, sorry. One, two. G, F, E. Nice. Next bit starts off the same way. A with the A, G with the C. One, two. Good. Now we have our G and the Bs. Our F just comes with the G. It will sound a little bit weird, don't worry. Because it will resolve. Because of the last E, we have the E. Yeah, let's try that. G and three E's. F with the G. E with the last of the E's. One, two. Nice. Let's try that. Uh, so that's our third phrase and our fourth phrase in isolation with that. A with the E. One, two. Just do the third and the fourth phrase. After two, one, two. So we have A with the A, G with the C, F with the G, and E with the E. That's it. Nice one. Okay. That's good. That's the first time round. That okay. So that melody repeats itself. Okay. The left hand changes slightly on the third and the fourth. The set the um, there. Let's see if we can go up to there though. Okay. Are you ready? From the start. Just the single notes. One, two. G, F, E. A, G, F, and E with the E. Good, okay? Next bit starts the same. You're gonna have one more time round that. You ready? Let's go for it. So this is the repeat. One, two. because we're about to go on to our second part. D fifth, a D and an A. I like to use my second and my thumb. Second on D, thumb on the A. That's gonna go with your your third phrase here after two. On with that A. One, two. Nice. And now we're gonna have an E fifth. So an E and a B. Move your left hand up one note. E and B with the G. Let's just try that together. One, two. Try from that D fifth. Da, 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 da. One, two. E fifth. Excellent work. Okay, so that's your kind of simplified version for the first part. Let's see if we can play it all together. Okay, then we're gonna I'm gonna give you the option of doing adding in another note, which will kind of change things up. After two, one, two.
Okay, so if you want to push yourself a little bit more with this first part, the reason we are using our second finger there instead of our thumb is because I wanted you to keep your thumb free because it's going to springboard onto the A. We're going to have A's after every one of the notes. Do you see what's happening there? My second finger is still playing, but my thumb is on that high A. So I play my low A, I play my high A, then I play the G that we've been playing, play the high A, play the F we've been playing, high A, E as we've been playing, and then the high A again. Okay, so that's the pattern that we're going. Let's see if we can just play that round together. One, two. So let's do another twice. One more time. Brilliant. Okay. Now the way that this is going to work rhythmically is that A is going to be in the threes. So you've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Have a listen. That works. I'm going to go on to the next bit. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so it's on the first note and the third note of all these groups of three. If you look at the music, you might be able to draw some lines. really slowly have a go of it if you want okay one I'm gonna in fact I'm gonna count one two three one two three okay you ready I'm gonna count the, those um, eighth notes those quavers one two three two two three yourself a little bit of a moment to breathe there okay so at the end of the first time through don't worry about doing that eh? you ready we go for it again after i'm gonna go one two three two two one two three two two three to match up exactly where those E's are coming in with the right hand melody. I want you to see if you can feel that. Dun, da, da, dun, da, 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 Try and trust the feeling of it. Get that hand, that left hand, kind of moving on almost independently to the right hand, but with it rhythmically as well. Okay, let's go for all of that again. See what you make of it. And then I'm going to play onto the second part. So play your melody for the second part and I'm going to play the left hand for it. One, two, three, two, two, three. up with this kind of uh, with the scotch snap part so we're gonna have fifths and octaves 
wee bit out in there trying to ignore that you can. So C fifth, and I want you to damp it immediately. So C and a G, just try putting your fingers. On my harp that's first metal C, not sure if it'll be metal on your harp, C below middle C, thumb on G. Playing it and straight back on. And then a G octave. So our first bit is going to be a C fifth, a G octave, C fifth again, same idea, and then an F octave. Okay, we're going to have that uh, pattern twice. So let's say we can play it twice in a row. We're going to count to two. It's going to come on those ones on the one, two, three, two, two, three. Okay, one, two. So C fifth, G octave, C fifth, F octave. Same again. G octave, C fifth, damned. That's it, you're getting it. F octave. Okay, so those are C fifths and those G octaves are going to come with those snaps. Okay, every time you have a snap, you're going to have a left hand note. So remember, our anacrisis, our thumb, is on the C. That means the C fifth is going to come on the E of the E C C. After two, let's see if we can get that first one. One, two. Now we have our E and D's. Have your G octave ready after two. One, two. Good, and you can leave that kind of um, running a little bit more. Don't damp that one so much. Now back to the C fifth. We're gonna have a G, E, E. Ready? One, two. Nice. Next bit of the right hand is E, A, G, F octave. You ready? One, two. Okay, let's see if we can put those four bits together. You ready? One, two. C fifth, G octave, C fifth, F octave. Nice, one more time. One, two. G octave. C fifth, F octave. Good. Here are C, C fifth and G octave again. Same place, same way that we've done it. Dun -dun. You ready? One, two. G octave with the E. Good. Next bit of our melody goes. We have our G, E, G, A. So we have our C fifth with our G. And our F octave with the E. Let me try it. One, two. Good, let's just try that one more, one more time. One, two. Good. Let's go from the start of that section. Okay, so it's really, it's like it's every time your thumb plays, you're going to have a left hand note. Okay, apart from in that second and that very first phrase, it's going to come with your second finger, okay? So apart from that, every other time your thumb plays, pretty much. Thumb. Their thumb, or oh, tell a lie, it matches up with the third finger there. But then we're back to our thumb. 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 And thumb, okay? So pretty much nearly every time. <laughs> Always kind of look for these identifying patterns to help you remember stuff, okay? C fifth, G octave, C octave, F octave. You ready? One... Two. G octave. C fifth. F octave. C octave. G octave. C fifth. Cool. Go for it again. One. Two. C fifth. G octave. First phrase is the same, C octave and G fifth. One, two. Our next bit is a bit where we went a little bit flowery. So we're going to represent this in our left hand as well. We're going to start off with the C fifth. But then an A octave, or actually an A one five eight if you wanted to. To really brush that up, because in your right hand you have E, A and C. A, E and A. 
unbrushing up from the bottom, floating it up. Let's see if we can get that going. So C fifth. You ready? One, two, three, One, two. Brilliant. Okay, ending phrase. Let's put the bit where we come tumbling down. And the snap with the E and the A's at the end. A little bit lighter here. We're going to have a C and an E, a C third. Then a B third. And that kind of represents the pattern that's going on in your right hand. The C and an E as we're coming down, E, D, C. It's going to happen on the first beat. One, two. C and E. Cross over to the B. You have a B and a D, a B third. Let's try it together. One, two. So remember to be damping, C fifth, G octave, C fifth, F octave. You ready? On the beat. Give that a light tap. One, two. ideas of what you can kind of mess around and do with the introduction. So back to the start, remember, see which version you want to try and do and see how you feel. You ready? One, two. kind of tend to play like that twice through but I would have an introduction as well and the introduction that I played you over at the fireplace was we had our left hand pattern under that okay and on your sheet of music as you can see I've got lots of kind of ideas of kind of things that you can kind of play around the ideas that you can kind of want to kind of improvise over that you could do autophase so that the melody 
lesen. Dann. So A, E, A. But going down, or you could go up as well if you wanted. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm playing around with the dynamics, getting louder and quieter and stuff. You can also do as I've written other music, there's another one, which is a kind of scale pattern. that or you can just improvise before merging into the melody so how about we play around with that and see what you can come up with um feel free to message me about it or can email me um or tag me in some videos that you've been doing of it it'd be fun to see what you come up with use that then as a kind of intro and you can use it as an outro as well so Let's head over now to the fireplace and I'll let you hear what I did earlier again. Join in, of course, and then we'll have our first letter of series three. So, yeah, let's head back over to the fireplace. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed learning that tune. As I said earlier, um, quite something for me to teach you a kind of more kind of minor moody tune to start off harp at home. But um, don't worry, I think next week we're going to go back to the kind of major -y, happy kind of sounding tunes. Um, huge thank you again to Claire for joining us. Um, I've got some great guests lined up for this series. Next week we are going to speak to the fantastic Shetland fiddler Ross Cooper, who is currently up in Shetland in the Shetland Islands. So. I'm really excited to speak to him, partly because he's a good pal. He um, normally resides down the road here in Glasgow, um, but for a number of months now he's been up in Shetland and it'll be great to catch up with him actually. So yeah, this is, just in case you don't know, this is the blether section where I just kind of have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And I blether on to you about kind of what's been going on. So we are here at the start of 2021. Um, we are currently in another lockdown in Scotland. Sure, as many of you are aware, um, all over the world really, cases of COVID have really rapidly increased with the winter weather. Um, but the vaccine is on the horizon. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. So we're pleased about that. I'm not gonna go on about that too much. So life is at home again, but to be honest, we're kind of used to that now. So it's okay. Um, Right now we've just kind of been busy back to kind of my private teaching and um, my teaching uh, my students on the Isle of Man once a month. Um, been doing a number of filming sessions. I myself and Ron got to film for BBC Reflections at, on the key at the key at the key again. This is the third time I've filmed for this series. Um, it's bonkers. Like my 
Pacific Key, the studios, the BBC studios in Glasgow is literally the place where I've been the most outside of my ho own home. Apart from maybe the supermarket, I guess. Um, literally, it's the place I've spent the most in the past year, I think. Um, or past 10 months um, because of filming this series. I've done, I did two uh, stints, um, one stint in April or end of March, right at the start of the lockdown. Um, then at in the summer when things were kind of getting good again and now it was brought in, we were brought in again. So it's been cool to do that. Um, you can still, if you're in the UK, you can still catch those. I'll put a link to them in the in the comment sections. Apparently, I'm actually on again tomorrow. I'm a little bit confused. Been on for the last three weekends we're on. We recorded three tunes, but the BBC schedule says that we're on again this Sunday, which I don't think they would repeat the tune that fast. I'm wondering if it's actually a tune that myself and my fiance filmed in the summer and they just got him mixed up with Ron. Because <laughs> we filmed three tracks in the summer and they only used one. So I'm wondering if that's what's happening. So yeah, I'll I'll check out the iPlayer on Sunday and see what happens. But I'll put a link into the ones that were on just now. Um, also did some filming for um, a big show um, that was broadcast in Australia. We were supposed to be touring in Australia last year. So we were part of a big Hogmanay show um, which featured some amazing musicians, including the Elephant Sessions, Brebach, um, just a uh, Heisk and um, who else was on it? Oh, I can't quite remember just now. Um, but it was, yeah, it was well, Ryan Young, fiddle player. That's who it was. <laughs> I knew it was someone else beginning with R. Um, so it was a great pleasure to be part of that concert. I'll put the link in the comments for that as well because it's a full concert. You might fancy watching that. And I have been busy. I did some workshops for Celtic Connections which kicks off tonight actually. I'm filming this on Friday um, and the festival starts tonight for two weeks. So there's going to be concerts every night. I highly recommend you check out Celtic Connections um, for live music this month. Um, and I was doing some education workshops for them which are going to be put out to the schools and as YouTube videos. Um, and of course homeschooling is a thing again here so uh, yeah, I, it should mean that like my little niece gets to see the workshops, which is really nice. So she'll be able to see Auntie Rachel telling you all about the harp. So that's good. And I, um, this weekend is quite busy actually. Um, the Ohio Scottish Arts School is coming back for the winter, for the weekend. So um, the Ohio, I guess it's instead of OSAS, it should be OWAS, Ohio, no, OSA, Ohio Scottish. Scottish Art School in the winter. I don't know, I'm talking rubbish now, dear to me. Um, but I'm really excited to be connecting to my friends in North America again with that. Um, I've got some classic tunes, some great Scottish tunes to teach you all if you're going to be at that. So I, that's what's been going on pretty much. Um, also got this harp with me here. This is a really old starfish. This is a starfish Glencoe that belongs to a pal of mine who is actually an emergency room doctor who's been very busy but she really wants to get back into playing harp so she asked me to restring her clarsock, her starfish Glencoe so I've been busy doing that and I've got all the strings on Tune it's a little bit dodgy because they're new strings I'm going to tune it after again um, after this filming I think but I need to cut off these wires I can't find my string cutters I don't know what I've done with them they're normally just sitting in my heart case, but I don't know where they've gone. I need to have a look around this flat and yeah, but it's been, it's been good. I'm really rather impressed with my neat string putting on. Um, got equal number, it's very uniform. My heart maker starfish would be so proud of me. I think I, I am going to send them a picture, I think, because I'm just so chuffed with myself about it. But it's been fun to do that. Um, good practice for putting on the strings. And it's funny, I remember seeing this harp when I was a student going to my pal's house. She lived in a flat um, in the West End in Glasgow, a beautiful attic flat. And I think we must have gone to her house, a flat, for a party after the pub, after the sessions. I was like, you play Clarsach? Because I was used to her being a fiddle player. And yeah, so it's been really lovely to kind of sort this harp out to her. Um, and hopefully, hopefully she'll be able to kind of play some tunes and chill out after what will have been a very stressful time of work this year for her. So yeah, that's been keeping me busy. Um, 
And of course, busy planning all the Harp at Home workshops for you. Can't wait to show you next one, next week's with Ross Cooper. It's going to be great crack. He's just, he's a fantastic musician. Um, and yeah, busy writing the suite of tunes for you as well, which I'll teach you. So hi, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for purchasing the PDF of the sheet music. That just keeps me going nicely. Um, and I really hope that you'll enjoy this third series of Harp at Home. It's really good for me to do these. It gives me something to do every every week for eight weeks. It's a good kind of wee block of stuff. And this will, I think, hopefully it will help tide me over these winter months. And hopefully it will help brighten your kind of parts of these winter months as well before the spring begins. So aye, cheers now. Have a good Burns Day when it comes. I hope you'll learn the tune that we've been doing and maybe even play it on Burns Day. Um, aye. Enjoy and I'll see you next week.